before we get going, um, we can just kind of do some quick introductions. Uh, I'm Kevin Klinkenberg, uh, Executive Director of Midtown KC Now, uh, formerly known as Main Corps, and we do work all through Midtown to help work with residents and businesses to do everything we can to help make Midtown a better place to, to live and work and, and develop. Um, and then with us, uh, we also have Lee Blumenthal from our office. Lee, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Sure. I'm the community engagement manager for Midtown KC Now. So I work directly with residents um, and small businesses um, doing small business uh, and shop small promotions. Um, and so just a lot of the communications that go out on social media and via our newsletters and emails, um, we're trying to provide as much content as possible to support uh, small businesses. And uh, we're looking forward to getting more information. And then if Rebecca and, and Davin, if you could each uh, take a minute to say who you are and what your organization does, that would be helpful. So Rebecca, why don't you go first? Sure. My name is Rebecca Goobles, and I work at the Missouri Small Business Development Center at UMKC. And our organization exists to help people start and grow businesses. And we do that in kind of three primary ways. The first of which is group learning experiences like the webinar that we're doing, like our individual day classes on up to 30 hour training courses that we're now delivering exclusively online through our Elevation Lab training arm. We do referrals to other nonprofit organizations, for-profit assistance, and individuals to help people grow. And when appropriate, we do one-on-one, -on -one, no-cost uh, business consultation. And uh, one of the partners we do a lot of referring to is our friends over at AltCap, which uh, I'll let Davin tell you all about that great organization. Yes, good morning, everybody. Um, as Rebecca mentioned, my name is Davin Gordon, uh, business development officer at AltCap. AllCap is a community development financial institution that um, our mission is to provide access to capital to a lot of those you know, capital starved communities. Um, you know, we primarily focus on small business lending uh, in the form of uh, micro loans, small business loans, and also new market tax credits. Uh, I'm a Midtown resident and I've, I've definitely gone to a lot of your programming in the past. Um, and I believe uh, Ruben, our president, is a board member of Midtown now. So yes, absolutely. We're, we're really uh, just thankful to to be uh, be able to provide, you know, uh, to be able to step up as an organization during these these crazy times. And um, yeah, that's what I'm here to talk about. So I appreciate okay. the, the invite, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, we're gonna get into it here pretty quickly, but I do really want to. Uh, say that it, I know you're both very, very busy, so we appreciate your time uh, right now. So um, let's just dive in. We're we're a, a few weeks into uh, this shutdown for everybody, and there's uh, been a lot of activity. Um, we're, what, a week now into people have been able to apply for disaster assistance through the various uh, SBA loan programs. Um, so I, I, I want, I, I hope we can cover obviously just some of the basics of what the different programs are that are out there, both federal and local. Um, but then also let's talk a little bit about uh, what has changed already uh, in the last week that you know of, because I know it seems like things are changing every day. And so let's tr the best we can give up to the minute uh, information for folks. So maybe, maybe Rebecca, the first place to start is have you talk about some of the uh, SBA uh, programs that are out available right now that people could be applying for. Sure thing. Um, to do that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to display a comparison grid that might be helpful to us as we uh, have this conversation. Hmm. Okay, so I want to be, uh, you should be seeing a grid a grid of uh, like four four different programs it looks like yes and i need to change this view just a little bit there you go so that uh, we can see that there are actually uh 
five items on this list, uh, really only two of which um, are big deals for most small businesses. I'd like to start the conversation um, actually from right to left. Uh, I'd like to start our conversation talking about the Small Business Administration's uh, debt relief program. This pertains to companies who already have Small Business Administration guaranteed loans. If you already had a, an acquisition loan or a building loan or working capital or whatever it may be, if your existing loan has a Small Business Administration a guarantee, um, then it should automatically uh, be uh, six months of principal and interest payments covered on your behalf. Uh, just like in all things, um, every organization is run by people who are all working hard and trying their best um, to get this all done uh, for everyone. And so while this is supposed to happen automatically, we are recommending that our clients reach out to their existing lenders and ask for the terms of this uh, debt relief for existing SBA loans. Um, so again, it's supposed to happen automatically, but everybody's got a lot on their plates right now in the financial mm -hmm. space. So we're asking that folks just reach out and ask if there's paperwork that needs to be done for this. Um, are they okay to just not make a payment um, to da, to da before, uh, before just making assumptions that could make things harder for them. But this effectively becomes six months of payments granted to you by the SBA, which for those that already have existing financing, this is, um, this is an important step of relief. It is not new financing, but it is relief from previous financing. The next piece of this uh, is the SBA Express Bridge Loans that came out as part of the very first uh, relief package, which was like years ago, it was only I think three and a half weeks ago. Uh, but this SBA Express Bridge Loan didn't really take off because when you think about what a bridge is, a bridge is a, uh, is a way to cover from two points of uncertainty, creating a bridge over the uncertainty. And the problem, this was intended to let banks get in on the lending up front, but in the current uh, crisis, there aren't two sets of certainty that we're, that you could bridge from. It's businesses, many of which are in dire straits, then bridging to an existing bank's depositor capital. And so it, it didn't have the right structure for how bridges are intended to work. And so while that exists, um, this is not something that I have heard of any institution in the Kansas City area having um, implemented in any way. So moving now, uh, one more column to the left is the Paycheck Protection Program that was rolled out as a part of the CARES Act two weeks ago Friday. So with the CARES Act uh, came the effort to now differently engage as area SBA preferred lenders and allow them to make loans equivalent to two and a half times a company's average payroll uh, and then uh, have those loans 100% guaranteed to the bank. Because again, the bank, each time they're making a loan, they are lending their depositors capital. And so there are reasons why on these PPP loans, local banks are starting with their existing customers, existing bank relationships, and those kind of things, because if for some reason, maybe the paperwork isn't right or something changes with the SBA rules for this, which don't, aren't required to be finalized until close of business today, mm -hmm. um, then there's concern about how those um, guarantees to the bank would work and they might be putting their depositors capital at risk. But that's the general gist of PPP. Um, we'll talk in just a moment of, in comparison, but that's at a real high level. PPP is two and a half months of your company's payroll. I'm going to skip this column because this is really a feature of this column, which is the economic injury disaster loans. The economic injury disaster loans are a path 
for financing through the Small Business Administration directly. You go through their website and it's designed to cover six months of a business's, uh, of a business's operating expenses. And so uh, with that, then in the application process, it asks if you are interested in a $10,000 advance. They had been uh, using the term, you can even see it here, this grid was updated only as of the 7th. And so this term grant here is a little misnomer. Uh, it gives you $10,000 loan advance, which can be forgiven if everything is entered correctly above board and with no intention to commit fraud. And so yes, it's basically a grant, but if you fib, uh, the government will turn it back into a loan and have you repay that. Okay. So at a really high level, those are uh, the features of some of the business SBA options right now. I'd like to now cover some of the more detailed nuances of idle through the SBA versus paycheck protection because there are some key differences that might benefit your audience to see. Yes, and, please. Uh, Kevin, I will send these links to you so that you can send them out uh, to your audience as well. Okay. So again, uh, this one unusual thing with this financing is that nonprofits are allowed to participate um, if they have 500 or fewer employees, which um, the SBA has never done in the past. And so that's a big deal. Um, if for some reason you have a chain of say fast food stores, that kind of thing, you'll probably have more than 500 employees. There are exceptions being made for those types of businesses where they're allowing the size standards to go per location for those particular industries. Uh, the application process uh, for these, for IDLE, you go direct to the SBA website. For uh, PPP, you go direct to your uh, local lender. Uh, if you have an existing bank relationship, start there. I can tell you that I've heard that Central Bank of the Midwest, UMB, and Davin, help me. Where does Victor Hammonds work? I cannot remember the name of his bank right now. His name's not ringing a bell, but gotcha. Uh, I should know this. I can, it's my I bad. Figure that out. I will tell you, I have heard that those institutions, while still prioritizing their own customers, may be at least open to looking at applications from those that are not existing customers, which is okay. um, which is a big deal um, because not everybody already has a relationship with an SBA preferred lender. Absolutely. Uh, Victor's at First National Bank of Omaha. Thank you. Thank you, Davin. Yes. Uh, appreciate a, that. A couple of a couple of others too is Academy Bank um, and also um, geez, sorry, I'm drawing a blank right now. Bank Bank Midwest. So just want to throw okay. those out there too. No, that's great. That's really helpful, Davin. So in going back to compare these terms, um, want to make sure that uh, see the term here on the idle loan. 30 years, whereas the term for the PPP loans are two years. So this could be a substantial amount of money that you're borrowing. And when you're borrowing a potentially substantial amount of money, I want you to think through how long um, you might want to pay off something the size of a house. 30 years is um, much more attractive than potentially two years to pay off something like that. And so that is a key difference between these two loan options. The amount, again, idle loans are capped at 2 million, as PPP loans are capped at 2 million. But in each instance, the bank is going to calculate with your assistance, um, your loan amount. The idle loan is going to be capped at six months of your business's operating expenses, not to exceed 2 million. PPP loans will disperse at 250% or 2.5 times your average monthly payroll capped at 10 million. The interest rates on these, uh, they're each quite low, uh, but there is a difference on idle loans, three and three quarters 
for for-profit businesses, two and three quarters for nonprofits, whereas the PPP loans are at 1%. That is, Kevin, a change since last week. These, uh, the terms on PPP loans were gonna be significantly different than this um, last week. And I won't talk about what they were going to be because it might confuse people, but there was gonna be a different rate and a different term and all kinds of stuff with these. And in an effort to create a secondary market for these loans, the rate on PPP loans did raise uh, because so many small banks make money on doing SBA loans uh, by then uh, selling the interest rate, right? Because there's only two ways that banks can, commercial banks can make money, right? It's fees right. and spread. Right. And right. there just was not enough spread in uh, the original structure of PPP loans to create a secondary market. And that was making it such that smaller institutions really couldn't participate in being of help. Right. So the good news for small businesses then in that scenario is the banks now have an incentive to really pursue these uh, programs and really work on them with small businesses. Yes. Yes. Okay. By creating okay. that secondary market. And there was news yesterday uh, that the Federal Reserve is uh, creating a uh, is creating a product for banks. Um, so it's not a thing that the business applies for, but small but banks. institutions yeah. can go to the Federal Reserve uh, to get a uh, capital vehicle um, to have more funds on hand to make these loans. That announcement okay. came late yesterday afternoon. Good, good, okay. So then um, each of the, the idle loans through the SBA are going to be um, at least partially collateralized if up into the size standards here. I will tell you though, that in a macroeconomic effort to take what is presently small business and employment risk and, and assuage that, the SBA will not be looking for home equity as a part of any collateral package for idle loans. Because otherwise structurally, that would take one type of risk and then just translate it into having created inadvertent housing risk. Sure. So idle loans uh, do need to be collateralized up to a point but they will not look to personal assets for that. The PPP loans are not collateralized in any way. Okay. Um, 200,000 and less on idle is not personally guaranteed. There is no personal guarantee required at all on the PPP structure. So on deferral, you don't have to pay for a year uh, during idle loans. You don't have to pay for six months to 12 months on PPP loans. However, up to 12 months, that's at the bank's discretion. And this is already a real skinny deal for them. And so I'm seeing only six months term, uh, come out of our local institutions. Uh, turnaround time longer on IDA loans than PPP loans because of the size of the organization and the amounts of things that they're each taking in. Um, they're talking about the $10,000 advance um, starting uh, potentially next week, coming three days after application for anyone who applies between after now, because many have already applied and made this request. Again, the federal rules for IDLE and PPP are not required to be finalized until the end of today. And so the banks and uh, things that have been moving forwards have been doing their dead level best to follow the guidance and do what they can, interpret the best that they can while still getting money out and protecting their depositors funds. And so I really applaud all banks who have been already working on these, taking applications, and in some cases making disbursements because uh, they've been working on moving sands and their efforts cannot be applauded enough. Yeah. So then uh, for a key difference in these is that on the IDLE loan, other than the ten, up to $10,000 advance, there is no loan forgiveness. However, the PPP structure, which again is a smaller amount for most companies, it's two and a half times your monthly payroll. But if you use that money to bring your employees back or keep them on for eight consecutive weeks, 
and they are actually working, they get paid, this kind of thing. There, as you can see, there's some additional details, but the general gist is then 100% then of those funds can be forgivable to you. Right. Um, so there's some caveats about how much time, how much work, um, some other ways to get a little extra forgiveness if you can't bring them back fast enough and those kind of things. But wanted to let you know that it is possible that a PPP loan could be entirely forgiven. And it is possible uh, to get both types of loans. If you're awarded both, you have to track them separately. So you can prove that your PPP money went exclusively for these payroll items. Then uh, as idle money is designed for operating expenses of which payroll is just one component, if you can track that money separately and prove that you use that for other expenses, um, you should be fine to have both. Yeah, and Rebecca, I'm gonna have a number of questions um, on this and others, but one, I wanna make one point about that. I, I did hear somebody suggest the other day that it would be wise to perhaps open a separate bank account um, oh, for yeah. the inflow and outflow of money for the loans, just so that you can be sure on the compliance. Absolutely, I have a client who has been awarded both, but only dispersed one, and we did guide them to create a separate PPP account yeah. for that original disbursement. And as the idle has been awarded, but not funded, they have opened a second account for that idle money so that there can be no doubt as to what money paid for what things. Okay, all right. Absolutely an excellent suggestion. Okay, I've got, I'm gonna have a number of questions on that, but I wanna uh, pause and give uh, Davin a chance here to talk about some of the local programs and, and what Altcap can offer. Um, and then we can have a little round table discussion about some specific um, issues with, uh, or questions on these. So. Devin, why don't you uh, why don't you take it from here? Thank you. Uh, just wanted to give uh, Rebecca a shout out. That was uh, the best explanation I've seen uh, since all these programs have kind of been rolled out. So uh, I really appreciate that. I, I actually learned quite a bit because uh, because of the fluidity of these programs, it's constantly been changing. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I'm yeah. here to talk about. Alt cap. Um, so one thing I would like to note and be very um, transparent about is that we are currently not accepting any new applications for our small business relief fund. Um, there's a lot of things that kind of took place last week, um, which I think contributed to that. So I'll just kind of start with, you know, we, we saw that there was a need for supporting those businesses that may not qualify for a lot of the SBA products, um, or maybe uh, don't have those banking relationships so that they weren't a priority for the bank and they didn't know where to turn. Um, there's just, <clears throat> I think we all understand, like the reason why CDFIs even exist is because of the lack of flow from our more traditional financial institutions. So uh, we saw this as a good opportunity for our organization to really step up um, because of our um, the role that we play, the relationships that we have, um, and and just the flexibility that we have because we're we're not regulated by you know some of the uh, you know by the FDIC and, and the OCC, so it allowed us the flexibility to come in and create this loan fund. Um, it was in partnership with a lot of amazing community partners. Um, I may forget some, but I, I know it's definitely Kaufman Foundation. Uh, Casey Rising, um, the Kansas City Chamber, and the Kansas City ADC. Um, there's there's a few other, and Port Casey is another huge par partner. Um, and we're continuing to, to hopefully recruit more partners and more folks to see the value in supporting our fund. Um, so yeah, we launched with a little over a million dollars. Um, we put out some some terms kind of like the SBA, it's like after the terms came out, we're like, okay, uh, we might need to refine this a little bit um, because after the first day we had, you know, over 150 requests for, for this small fund. And so we said, hey, look, in order for us to make sure that this money gets um, dispersed throughout the community and throughout the city, uh, we need to, I think, narrow in our focus a little bit more. So we decided to prioritize um, a lot of the non-essential businesses that either had to close their doors down because 
you know, the, the local mandates or the, or the state mandates, um, and then also those sort of businesses that have significantly been impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. Um, so to get into more of the nuts and bolts, so um, yeah, it's, these, are, these are a three-year loan um, up to 50000 uh, the terms on the loan, the first year would be zero interest, uh, the second year is 2% interest, and the third year is 4.5. Uh, we have no prepayment penalties, and we are also providing the option of deferring principal payments for the first 6 to 12 months. Um, as far as collateral, that's uh, it's very flexible as far as you know, we, to kind of Rebecca's point, we don't really want to use uh, personal assets when collateralizing these because of the, the points that she made. So we're really trying to rely on the business assets, um, things of that nature. And if, if the amount isn't too, um, too high and the financial health of the business prior to the crisis look good, um, you know, it's almost essentially a signature. Um, you know, we will get a, a personal guarantee on it, but um, that's the product. Uh, our hope is to and was to get these uh, moved as quickly as possible because w we understand that the SBA may take a while. Um, you know, by the time the SBA dollars actually get to some of these businesses, it, it potentially could be, you know, maybe too late or it could be, put them in a, at a really high risk of um, having to make decisions that they didn't want to have to make. Um, so, that's kind of the intent of, of our small business, our COVID-19 small business relief fund. Um, I would say after the first three days, we received over 600 requests here just in Kansas City. Um, and so we decided that it, it would probably be wise for us to not accept any and just kind of come through those first 600, um, really trying to prioritize uh, certain the, the different businesses and making sure that we've got enough capital to meet the demand. So we're, we're continuing to fundraise, um, but we anticipate, um, we've actually already funded, um, I think we've approved 11 loans so far. Uh, and there's quite a few already in the pipeline. Um, and hopefully after, after next week, we'll have an, a better idea if we can open it back up to, to more folks. But if folks are interested, we are, uh, encouraging people to uh, sign up to our newsletter or follow us on social media. Um, and I can provide the links to all of that um, just for further notice if anything changes, if we open it back up. So okay. um, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. Yeah, so um, it's great. It's good if you're continuing to fundraise, there's some hope that you'll be able to do more yeah. loans with that fund. Mm -hmm. um, what about, Davin, other local uh, efforts? I know the city of Kansas City put together like about a half million dollar fund. Do you, do you know enough about that to speak to it? Yeah, I, I don't know enough to, um, to give you guys any sort of specific details essentially, but um, what was, I think, uh, what I am aware of is that the city is gonna be working with the EDC. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the product will be. I don't know if it's gonna be small business grants or if it'll be um, some sort of loan product. So again, I don't want to confuse anyone, but the city is working with the EDC around that half million dollar funding that they that they had mentioned. So okay. that's what that that was a big change from last week to this week, um, because I think the original announcement was they are going to be working with AltCap, um, and then uh, things changed, and now they are, are working with the EDC, so the Kansas City Economic Development Corporation. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. I have a question, Davin. I think volume is one of the things that each individual small business owner has a hard time getting their arms around. So you talked about those 600 applications uh, that you received. Can you talk about that volume of applications being 600 versus maybe what you typically see in a year? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question. I'm glad you pointed that out. So typically, we will probably see about five to maybe 10 of these sort of inquiries a week. And so that's maybe 20 a month. We saw over, we saw 627 to be exact in three days. Um, and yeah, so, our so you team, saw three years worth of applications in three days. one three day period. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think that's hard 
for the small business owner to think about because we all approach this, you know, from a sense of of trying to solve our own problems and the problems of our customers and employees, and that is appropriate. But it's it's hard to then imagine what it must be like if you owned a restaurant and then suddenly 600 people came to try and eat on one evening, it's that same kind of attempt to, um, to be of service and the things that um, caught up in the works of something that's set up for a different volume. Yeah, exactly. so, so I think Rebecca, what I hear you saying is uh, even though we're all uh, very stressed and feeling a sense of urgency about this, especially if you run a not-for-profit or if you own a small business, yeah. To uh, have a little patience and understanding of the uh, incredible volume that uh, banks, that lenders, that SBA staff are dealing with, and everybody's doing their best to try to work through this, but it is, it's a crush of uh, information and applications all at once. So exactly, yeah, absolutely. Well, I did want to add to so what <laughs> one thing we did as a team decide is how important it was for us to. Um, follow up with each person um, because you know I think with the SBA products folks were submitting things especially like the EIDL and had no sort of like thanks for sending this in or yeah. this has been received or uh, nothing no sort of communication and so I think a lot of people are just kind of uh, don't know what to do uh, how to operate how to maneuver and so for us, we decided it's important to acknowledge every single person that has submitted any sort of interest with us. Um, and so I was really glad that our team was able to reach out to all 620 plus folks within the first week, um, whether that be via email or phone call, we, we acknowledge every single person. Um, and everyone's been, I think that's been my biggest takeaway so far being a part of this process is that folks are just so thankful to have someone acknowledge them, to talk to them um, mm -hmm. and to give them some guidance. So I just want to throw that out there. Great, thanks. Absolutely. So, on that, uh, actually, Kevin, I'd yeah. like to contribute a little bit. On, uh, on the SBA side, I think the way that SBA disaster loans typically work is that there's unfortunately a tornado like in Joplin some years ago or flooding like Missouri saw this year. And then what happens is there is an SBA disaster recovery team from around the country. And these are employees who then converge in the place of the disaster. And those staff then work with the local SBA office and the local SBDC, maybe like ourselves, to then implement disaster financing. But in a situation where the entire American economy is the disaster zone, the mechanism by which disaster loans typically function was not suited for the size of the emergency. And so that's why the website volume um, has been so overwhelming because typically this is handled in an entirely different yeah. process with deeply more detailed application needs and those kinds of things. And so the I, while it is so frustrating rightfully to, to hear that, you know, I've applied for this loan and I haven't heard anything, um, this is, to give you a frame of reference in the first three days of, and when it was only seven states that were approved for SBA idle funding, there were 20,000 applications. The word is now that it's up over 4 million and the way that they usually do it is inappropriate for the task. So it's a website that's constantly being simplified and grown to meet the need. And so I, I feel for SBA, much like I feel for Davin's alt cap team, um, because the way that they usually solve this problem just isn't appropriate for a nationwide co-emergency. Yeah. So let's let's dig into a couple specifics then, Rebecca. What, what can uh, a small business owner do to be best prepared um, so uh, understanding there is, it's going to be really hard to get a lot of individualized help uh, right mm -hmm. now, especially from SBA. Uh, what should I be doing? Uh, what paperwork should I have ready? What um, financial information should I really have my arms around before I go to my lender or before I go to fill out a form with SBA? Gotcha. Um, if it's all right with you, I'm gonna go ahead and share a screen again. Sure, so yeah. 
Um, and I will also, again, send you this article and these details so that you can share it with your uh, members and participants as well. But now I'm going to share my screen again. And we should be taking a look at an article on our SBDC website about financial response to COVID-19, things your business can be doing now. And so this article starts with some really useful information about cash flow management practices, which I am in hopes that all of your participants will take the time to find and read. Um, your SBDC counselor, if you don't already have one, just call us 816-235-6063 and we'll hook you up with one. We can talk about what this means for your individual business. But then just scroll down here, there's a little math about how to figure out how long your existing cash will last you. Your SBDC counselor can help you with that too. We're going to keep scrolling down. Nice link to alt cap here. Um, but then getting into your direct question, Kevin, is about the SBA disaster financing. There are links in here to the sample uh, PPP loan application. I will send you this uh, document, um, which actually you may not be able to see this document because it's a Word file. Let me try that again. Let me get to this Word file here. This is a link to the minimum application requirements for the PP, no, pardon me, for the idle loan. I will tell you I have not updated this since yesterday when a new question about operating expenses was added. Um, so there is one additional question here about your operating expenses because it already asks gross revenues and cost of goods sold, but at no point did it ask what your operating expenses were which is odd considering uh, it's calculated based on six months of operating expenses, but you know, we're all figuring it out together, all just people trying to get it done. All right, so now I'm gonna go back into this article and show, because what I just showed are the basic minimums to apply, but please understand that the application process is not the same as the underwriting process. Because what was happening three weeks ago when this first started, the, the funnel for this was narrow, right? It had a lot more application processes required, a lot more documents, and so people were bouncing out and they weren't being able to get into the funnel. So then what they've done is they've, at the SBA, they've simplified how you can apply to make the top of this funnel much wider. So even though there's still some issues, there are people getting in. However, um, that's the application minimum. It's not necessarily what we're recommending people put together for approval. So hopefully you're looking at uh, what my screen here where it talks about business documentation that we request that people start putting together, uh, who your employees were, average payroll costs, tax reports, gather your past three years of tax returns, go ahead and fill out uh, 4506T form, which, uh, is verifying of your tax information, gather your 2019 internal uh, income statement and balance sheet because many may not have had their 2019 tax returns done, which is great. We got until July 15th, both federally and in Missouri to get that done. So no need to sweat that, but you do have to have some internal calculation. You gotta show what's been happening to your company in 2020. And so some income statements there, balance sheet showing what your company owns, owes and has an equity, list of your business debts, go ahead and gather your I'm a real business documentation. So that's articles of incorporation or organization. If you have a partnership agreement, maybe you have a fictitious name filing. Many companies require a certificate of good standing and all of that can typically be found um, on your state's Secretary of State website. And if you're in Missouri, it's linked here. Uh, business narrative. This is a kicker, guys, because these are machines doing the first pass and then humans making some decisions on these loans. And you want to make sure that you are prepared, if you get asked a question in the underwriting process, that you are prepared with this documentation to be able to send it over and be like, yes, good question. Here's the information versus, well, I don't know. 
let me uh, let me gather some of that and I'll get back to you. And and based on the speed that so many of us need this money, let's be prepared with this information in advance. And so when it comes to business narrative, like who is who are you? Who is your company? Why were you doing well? You know, what have you already done to try and solve this? You know, how much money are you looking for? Please know what your six months of operating expenses actually is if you're looking for an idle loan. So you'll know if you get shorted. Um, please know what two and a half times your average monthly payroll is. So if you get awarded a, a PPP loan, you actually know um, what that amount should be. And then you want to talk about um, how you're going to be able to pay a loan back. Uh, I, we're recommending that our clients make some projections, not just for the bank though. You as a business owner need to know if I take out this money and I get it in say the month of April, what will that look like? When do I think people will come back? If it's a manufacturing business, that might be very different than a restaurant. So what does your experience and your best educated guests tell you? And then strategically, can you make it? And if you can, how quickly? Those are things that you as an owner need to know. This is not just something to do for the bank, but we highly recommend you do a set of projections. And that is another thing that your small business development counselor, like myself and my 10 counterparts, are here to help with. If you have multiple businesses, there are rules about affiliates. Um, Cause so you're recommending if you own more than one thing, what are the entities? How much do you own? All of that information there, as well as gathering information about your personal finances and personal uh, tax return collection. Okay. So, so it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a fairly typical list of information that you would have for, for any business loan. Um, it seems like. Yeah, uh, the affiliates know. stuff and the payroll stuff are definitely different. And yeah. the, the narrative, the components of that narrative are, uh, are a little different as well. But you're right. right. Anyways, it's a standard loan package um, request. Keeping in mind that that's what you ought to have to be the best qualified if you get a question during underwriting. And it's different than applying right here here you're applying and then the approval process is going to shrink it down again so you right. want to make that you're the business coming out the end with that money so uh what i've heard some people tell me who have applied is depending on how organized you are with your accounting uh and your bookkeeping that expect to spend maybe two to four hours of preparing all this information um for the application um somewhere in that ballpark. And, and if you, if you're organized enough that you sh that amount of time, which, you know, to some people may seem like a lot to some that may not seem like much at all, but in order to qualify for these loans and have a really solid application, just spending a little bit of time doing the homework right is really going to help. Absolutely. And plus to this has been uh, reduced, especially on the SBA side so that you can get your application in using the minimum information and then continue gathering the rest while it's consideration. Okay, and so I, I also know that uh, on both loans, I think as you mentioned earlier, some people have already been approved, quite a few people have already been approved. How quick should somebody expect to turn around from their lender or from SBA? Uh, two weeks from your lender is a reasonable expectation and SBA is saying three to six weeks. I don't think any of the idle money is gonna get dispersed uh, until next week, truthfully, okay. because rules haven't been fine, aren't required to be fine yeah. until today. And okay. so I think it'll be next week before the SBA starts dispersing. But then from that point, I do anticipate SBA speed picking up um, from its current three to six week estimate. Right. Okay. So I think I, I want to help reiterate then for a lot of people, um, uh, if, especially if you're going to do the PPP route or if you have an existing SBA loan, the first place to go is to talk to your lender. Um, that that is the smartest and best place to go is to talk to your, your lender who you have an existing relationship with. If you don't have a lender with an existing relationship, then we could circle back to some of those banks that you mentioned earlier, the list of four or five banks who are accepting um, people who were not previous clients. So that that's a smart way to go. Um, and that, it, if you want to go the idle route uh, and then you will go direct to SBA through their website for that. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
And I've heard too, if you don't have a business loan with your bank and it isn't for all, um, there are a few that I've folks that I've talked to said that the bank didn't consider them uh, necessarily priority because they didn't have a loan with them. So um, again, just talk to your banker first. There's also a link on the SBA website uh, with a locator to find folks that are providing the PPP program. So you're able to type in your zip code and find mm -hmm. uh, banks near you that are providing the PPP. Great. Yeah, it's called their lender match service. If you go to the SBA website and search lender match, uh, you can find that. Okay. And to Davin's point, uh, you know, these banks are lending their depositors money, right? One yeah. of the rumors was that it wasn't even going to be their money, that the treasury was just going to, you know, fund them a bunch of money. And then it doesn't really matter because they're not, it wouldn't have mattered because they're not risking their depositors' funds. But when that structure is stopped, each loan that they're making, it has to be made properly because otherwise you could go to the ATM and try to make a withdrawal and get a message that says, whoopsies, made the wrong PPP loan. And can you imagine what that would mean for the economy? And so I wanna make sure that we're not vilifying banks for being slow. And there are reasons why it makes sense for the bank to first make a PPP loan to their existing loan customers. Sure. Because those loans and those customers is representing their depositor money that they've already put on the street. And they yeah. deeply need that those companies to survive to be able to protect their depositors. And so it isn't, I just like you better, right? Mm -hmm. A business structure reason why they're protecting their existing loan customers then their own depositors, then open to additional people. It yeah. has to do with the structure of how banks function and protect all of our money. Um, and when each time we get a paycheck and are lucky enough to get a paycheck in this time and protect it so that it'll be there when we need to write a check or make a withdrawal. Okay, now that, I appreciate that. Um, that, that makes sense. So uh, I wanna, before we kind of wrap up, I wanna do a quick characterization and see if you agree with me on this. Um, if you are in a situation as a business owner where you think you need, um, uh, a, I won't say a small amount of money, but a, a not an enormous amount of money to kind of make everything work for say the next two to four months, um, the places to go are probably the PPP loan or one of the local funds when, when Davin and his crew are able to raise 10 million more dollars and, and really seed that fund, right? Um, but those are more of sort of the short term models. The EIDL program, the EIDL program is really geared to be set up to be a little bit larger, longer term financing um, uh, capped, you know, with, with the longer, the 30 year financing. It's geared to somebody who might have the resources to hang in there for a little while now, but is gonna need assistance to really hit, to make it work for the next year or two or three or whatever. Does that make sense, do you think? It does. I am recommending that our clients pursue both paths concurrently, PPP okay. and the EIDL loan. Because by the time your PPP money shows up, you've got to get people back to work and this kind of a thing. But so many businesses have just foregone two, if not three months of sales. And that right. is a long-term working capital gap. Right. And, and PPP is wonderful, but it's short term right. to fix what is a long term working capital gap and it's a product mismatch. And right. so, yes, fill the immediate gap, do what you need to do, but filling this gap is you need to do that on a term loan over time. I'm trying to put my hands in the camera. <laughs> Sorry about this. But this working capital gap that you're going to have for your whole year, it's going to take quite some time of regular business profits to pay sure. that. And that's why that's done on a term loan over time. Right. So let, let, let me ask you this then. Uh, this would be, I guess, my final question. But it, let's assume uh, you've convinced me as a business owner that I should apply for both. Mm -hmm. uh, do I, do I, I've got to fill out one of them first. Will I fill out the PPP first? Sure. Then, it's shorter term and faster turnaround. Okay. Hey, Rebecca, I have a question. If you are awarded both, do you have to take both? Right, no. right. If I apply and you're and I'm accepted, does that mean I need to take the money? No. Okay. So the reason I say that is if there are programs or more things that roll out, do not wait to apply. Um, you know, try to apply as soon as possible. 
not only because of like what we experienced, but with like the PPP that first three, 350 billion um, is, I think is dried up pretty quickly. And so they're already talking about the next 250 billion. So mm -hmm. um, do not wait for those things because they will pass you by. Um, you can figure out the details later. We can, uh, like Rebecca was saying on the application process, throw your name in the hat and then you can work on the details and, and really hone in on what amounts you need and, and how you can utilize it. But do not do not wait to submit your interests yeah. in any of these programs. Yeah, that's a that's a great point, Dan. And it's just don't hesitate uh, for any reason. Just apply and get everything working. If if something happens down the road that um, things work out and you don't need it as much, then great. Then great. You know. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and there's no prepayment penalty on. Okay. Good. Any of these. Right. So, um, if you get awarded both, uh, truthfully. Um, I'm saying take the money from both, track it appropriately, and once you see that you're going to be fine, pay it back. Okay. Um, but a lot of my business owners who three weeks ago were like, oh, no, this is going to be fine. I don't need such and such a, that's, I told you before, I was negotiating my last half an hour of availability today with a gentleman who told me three weeks ago that he was fine. And now he's like, do I have to pay everyone's vacation before I lay them off? So again, that has some things to do with assumptions and speed and, and all the things that we're bringing to the table. Just put yourself in the best position to be awarded funds and make decisions about whether or not you're going to take them and in what terms once you have the opportunity, right? So create choices for yourself and then choose. Don't choose and then limit your choices. Yeah, exactly. great, great point. Lee, do you have any questions or, or thoughts before we uh, move on? No, I'm just, uh, you know, just thinking about all those small businesses in Midtown, you know, we're, we have a lot of uh, boutique type or maker oriented spaces in Midtown where, you know, the o business owner may be the only employee or have a staff of just one to three people. Um, what would be your words of wisdom for those individuals? I know going to your lender is probably important but what else would you recommend? Well, single entity owners and 1099 contractors, many of whom do not consider themselves owners, but they are, they're owners of their own business and they are the only person, they are eligible for PPP loans starting today. It was open to more traditional businesses starting last Friday, but single member LLCs, sole proprietors and 1099 contractors, which you think about that includes so many roof yeah. painters um, and tradesmen. Um, well, I guess trades people, pardon me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, please do think of yourself as a business owner, change your mindset and do reach out to your local bank or PPP financing first and start today. Great. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, this has been really instructive and helpful uh, for me and hopefully this will be great for our community as well. I, I know it's terrific information. So I know you all are working really hard, and so we, we need to let you go and, and help, uh, help actual small businesses out um, on their applications and through all this kind of crazy time period. But thank you very much.